16. I got 16 books for Christmas. <laughs> Let's talk about them. <laughs> Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, hi, my name is Liz. This is my what I got for Christmas book video. So uh, as I said before, I got 16 books for Christmas, which was way more than I thought I was gonna get originally. Some of them are ones that I received and are also some are ones that I actually went and bought with gift cards I received from Christmas. I got a very wide range of things. Some, I do have one children's book, I have a special edition of like a bunch of fairy tales. I have a memoir. I have a lot of fantasy. I have some romance. I have some mystery thrillers. So I kind of have a mixture of a bunch of different types of books and I'm excited to talk about them. So without further ado, let's get on into the video. So the first book, this is the children's story that I mentioned. I got this from my parents and the reason why there's actually a little bit of a backstory to this, me and my mom went shopping at Target together one time and I remember looking through the children's book section because I have a niece and a nephew so I just casually went through that section and I noticed that they have the office but in a children's book version so <laughs> I do not have any children obviously but I do have a niece and a nephew and I absolutely loved this book whenever I flipped through it I thought it was so funny it was cracking me up seeing all the different characters from the office and like their roles in a classroom setting as children and it was just so entertaining so I got this one and I'm so excited to read this to my future children this next one I got I actually got this back in the summertime when me and my parents went to Maine we went into this really cute bookstore and I found this on the special edition shelf and my parents went ahead and got it for me and saved it for Christmas. So it was this really cool edition of Snow White and other Grimm's fairy tales. I saw this in like an Instagram ad and I fell in love with it. It's like an interactive, really cool like storybook. So when you're flipping through like some of the, like some pages obviously are the actual stories, but then there's some pages where it does like stuff like that, where it's just like this really cool 3D landscape of what's happening in the story. And there's other ones that just like pop up or do stuff like this one, the magic mirror, it slides and you know, who's fairest of them all, all that kind of stuff. And it just has a bunch of really cool stories. There's one that's Hansel and Gretel when they come across the little, the witch's cottage out in the forest. And it actually like, opens up into an actual building. So it's just really cool. I really wanna have this on my shelf. Eventually when I have more space, I would like to actually display this and have it sitting open in like a little book stand. But for now, I'm just so excited to have this and to collect these kinds of special editions. And I can't wait to eventually read these to my future kids because this would be so special. Obviously they need to be old enough to where they're not gonna rip anything out of this because I think I would cry if this got ruined. I'm just so excited. I love this so much. Next, I have a memoir. And I one of my reading goals for this year is to read Read a few memoirs because I read Jeanette McCurdy's last year and I really enjoyed it and I really want to get into kind of reading outside of my comfort zone this year. So I went ahead and got the Matthew Perry Friends, Lovers, and The Big Terrible Thing and I'm so excited to read this. I grew up watching Friends. I am a huge Friends fan and this was one of my comfort shows. I would literally just throw this on and anytime it was on late at night I would flip to it and watch it. And ever since Matthew Perry passed away, I've really been intrigued by his memoir and I just wanna listen to it as well. I might listen to the audiobook because I believe he narrates it. And I'm just so excited to hear his story. The next book I got was The Stars Are Dying by Chloe Penoranda, I think is how you say that. And what drew me to this book is it is Serpents and Wings of Night meets Shadow and Bone. Two very cool fantasy worlds and they are combined in this book and it just sounds so cool. So this book, it follows Astrea who is a captive of the king in this kingdom and she actually doesn't remember her past. So she has no clue who she is or where she came from, which I find very intriguing. And since she doesn't know who she is, she decides to embark on this quest to figure out who she is and just set herself free. And she meets this vampire named Knight and makes a bargain with him where he says he will keep her safe on her quest or on her journey. Not really sure what's in it for him, but 
who knows and her quest leads her to this set of trials called the libertatum which is basically where the five human lands in this kingdom all compete in this set of trials in order to i guess just earn safety from the vampires that roam this world so it sounds very much like serpent and wings of night in that way where there are vampires that are taking over and the humans are not safe and so it sounds like our main character astrea is going to be involved in this set of trials so i'm really excited to see that and also in the little tagline it said star-crossed lovers romance next we have a sea of blood and sapphire by florence gray and the only reason why i wanted this book was because it is a little mermaid retelling i have read a lot of different retellings like Beauty and the Beast. I've read a Cinderella retelling and now I'm reading Little Mermaid. So I'm really excited to see the spin that it takes. The top of the book it says they wanted her dead so she sold her soul to leave. Okay. Next we have Fireborn by Rosaria Munda and this sounds very similar to Fourth Wing. I saw a girl posted a TikTok about this book. It's a completed trilogy or series and she said if you liked Fourth Wing you'll enjoy this book as well. So immediately I knew I want that book. <laughs> the two main characters you follow Annie and Lee who were both friends growing up. They both grew up in the same orphanage and they are both now rivals so it's many years later and they are both now rivals who are training in this dragon riding fleet and they are both the two top of their class so they're rivals in that way. War is kind of a threat and that's imminent and so they both are at this crossroads where they have to choose between each other or what they both believe is right. So sounds really good. I cannot wait to read this. Anything that's similar to Fourth Wing, I'm gonna eat it up. I just, I already know I'm gonna love this book. Next we have Child of Light by Terry Brooks. So this is another fantasy book about a girl named Oris. She's been spending the past five years in this goblin prison and she has no recollection of her life before she was in this prison. She has no clue why she is here or who she is or what she is and why she's in this prison. And she is now coming of age to where she's aging out of this children's prison and aging into the adult prison, which is way worse and way more dangerous and deadly. So when she realizes this, she stages an escape trying to get out of the prison with a group of fellow prisoners and during the escape she is rescued by this fae stranger named Harrow and so Harrow takes her to his homeland which once again he's fae and he believes that she is fae as well but she has grown up human she has no clue why he would think she's fae she has no magic that she's ever seen so it sounds really interesting and I'm really excited to read this I also went ahead and got Daughter of Darkness so this is the second book and I just love these covers these are so stinking pretty i believe that this is going to be a trilogy so i know that there's gonna be another book at some point but i am really excited to read these next up we have never by jessa hastings now i was really excited to read this book because jessa hastings she wrote the magnolia park series which i enjoyed that series for what it was it wasn't my all-time favorite series but it going into it with the expectation that there were going to be a lot of toxic relationships and it was more going to be just like entertainment of like the elite how they all deal with their own toxic relationships it was more just entertaining but jessa hastings has very lyrical and beautiful writing she had so many quotes in magnolia parks that i just think back on and i just know that if you take her writing style and put it into a fantasy it's gonna be a good book so this never book it is a retailing of peter pan and it's a essentially the main character she is at the point where I think every woman in her family line has been visited by Peter Pan he's taken them to Neverland however he is late he was supposed to come when she was a child and now she's an adult and he shows up and takes her to Neverland and it's basically I think it's going to be more of a love triangle between her Peter Pan and then also Captain Hook's son so really excited to see this book and how her writing style holds up in a fantasy fantasy world. Next up, I got Ruthless Vows by Rebecca Ross, which is the second book to Divine Rivals. I have not read Divine Rivals yet. However, I've heard great things and I cannot wait to read this book. I'm hoping to get to it sometime in January. So within 2024, I would love to start the year off with these two books and I'm really excited to read them. Next up, we have Immortal Longing by Chloe Gong and Chloe Gong is the author of These Violent Delights, which I loved that duology. I do own that and have read that. I think I read that this past year. I really liked her writing style. So she does a really cool thing where she'll take these Shakespearean plays and turns them into a fantasy type world, but it'll be like set in a time period where it just really brings the world to life. This book is inspired by Shakespeare 
Shakespeare's Antony and Cleopatra, so that'll be really interesting. I don't know if it's the same time period as these Violent Delights. I know that was set in the 1920s, so I'm not sure when this is set, but I'm sure it's gonna be in a very prominent time period and it's gonna be really cool and interesting. In the Kingdom of Talon, that every year they host this set of challenges and trials where people from all over are able to participate. You basically jump from body to body or person to person. So this is some sort of magical skill or ability and you're fighting to the death for wealth, essentially. So this follows Princess Kala and an aristocrat named Anton and they both have their own kind of secrets and their own motivations for winning. And so they become teammates in this set of challenges. So I'm very excited to see the kind of romance that develops through this. And I'm really excited to see the world. I feel like it's gonna be very interesting. Next up, we have Blood Sisters by Vanessa Lilly. This is actually from Target and I had no clue. I, I guess I'm just living under a rock, I don't know. But Target has a book club and this was one of their books of the month or their book club pick. So I'm very intrigued about this one. Um, but this is about a Cherokee archeologist who is sent back to investigate in her hometown, the disappearance between these two women and one of them is her sister and so it sounds like she's running from her past she's a lot of like past trauma within this hometown and coming back to it she kind of has to face her past while also trying to save her sister's future it is a murder mystery so I think it's gonna be really cool and I'm really excited to learn more about a Cherokee archaeologist that just sounds interesting I don't know so next we have this dark descent by Kaylin Josephson this is said to be a mixture between the Scorpio races and six of crows so I read the Scorpio races when I was younger. I've not read Six of Crows, but I've heard great things and I know it's like about a heist and like a found family type thing. But this just sounded so interesting when I heard that. I kind of just immediately wanted to read it and also the cover is beautiful. So there's that. This follows the daughter of a famous horse breeder, a black market enchanter, and an ambitious heir who all kind of team up to win this enchanted horse race. And it's very deadly. A lot of people die and it just sounds really cool. So enchanted horse race. I don't know. I've never read a book or a fantasy about horses. So I think this will be really interesting and kind of different. Next up, we have Strange Unearthly Things by Kelly Crea. Crea? I don't know how to say her name. It is about a psychic artist who basically draws what she sees, which are spirits. And she is invited to this haunted English manor they're trying to investigate and they need her skill set of seeing spirits and along with a few other people who have similar abilities to her so it just sounds really interesting it is a romance it sounds like more of a darker romance and I feel like this will be really good uh, I don't know if I'll read it anytime soon I feel like this would be more of like a spooky season romance so I might save this for next fall but I just love the cover and I think it's really pretty and I'm really excited to read it on the lighter side of things next we have betting on you by Lynn Painter absolutely love Lynn Painter. She is one of my favorite authors that I discovered this year. I just started reading all of her young adult romances and her new adult romances and I love all of them. So I'm really excited about this one. It is about two coworkers. They strike up a bet to see if men and women can be friends just friends while they are also fighting their own feelings for each other. So I'm really excited about this. It sounds like a really cute rom-com. I'll probably read this in February closer to Valentine's Day and I cannot wait. And last but not least, we have The Carnival of Curiosities by Amy Gibbs. This cover, look at how stinking pretty this is. And the back has like a bunch of tickets for like the circus. Oh, I just love it so much. This book, I don't know too much about. I do know that it obviously has to do with some sort of circus and the main character, he can control fire or something like that. I don't really know much <laughs> about this book, but I am planning on reading The Night Circus very soon. And so it just sounds very magical. I'm really excited. I haven't heard much of anyone talk about this book. You asked for it. Here I go. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Every video where I have a lot of books, I have to hold them up at some point. <gasps> and I didn't drop any. That's impressive. <laughs> And that is it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed getting to see all of the books that I got for Christmas in this winter season. I got 16, which is crazy, more than I thought I was gonna get. And also 
I am going on a book buying ban. So you heard it here first. I went through my physical TBR recently and I was disgusted with myself with how many books I have on my shelf that I have not read yet. And I really wanna get through a lot of them. My reading, one of my reading goals for this year is to only buy about five books a month. However, <laughs> with this huge haul of Christmas and all of the books that I got for Black Friday and Cyber Monday, I really need to cut back on how many books I'm buying. So I'm going on a book buying ban until my birthday, which is March 20th. So I have to wait almost three months. I can wait three months. That's not, that's not anything crazy. And I have plenty of books, obviously, to read in that time. So hopefully I gave you some ideas for new books to buy if you are like me and love to get Barnes & Noble gift cards for Christmas. I will be releasing some new bookish content coming up in the new year. I have a really exciting video coming up next week on Tuesdays. Also, I'm going to be reorganizing my bookshelves in January and I'm also going to be talking about some newer books that I'm going to be reading within the next year. Some books I'm looking forward to. So look out for those videos and I hope you guys had a really great Christmas. I hope you had a really fun holiday season I know I did obviously and I just really enjoyed it love this time where you get to just relax and read a new book and maybe go buy some books thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys in my next video happy reading bye